Hello, Stephen Dean speaking. Um, I want to look at Akim again today, and what I want to look at is chapter 27, The Healing of the Dream, part 3, Beyond All Symbols. Um, this passage here, number 3. The picture of your brother that you see means nothing. There is nothing to attack or to deny, to love or hate, or to endow with power or to see as weak. It's saying basically that the picture of my brother, i.e., say, the person standing before me, is an illusion. What I perceive of him is my own personal idea based on my memories of what he is or what he's like. It's not right. It's just my perception of what he is, so it's not truth. So it means nothing. There's nothing to attack or to deny, to love or to hate or to endow with power to see as weak. Because then I start adding to him, I know nothing about him, truth of him. So everything that I see about him is things that I've added to him, I try to decide he's weak or decide, decide he's strong or decide to love him or to hate him. It's all my decision. He's just there in his illusional way. It says then, the picture has been wholly cancelled out because it symbolised a contradiction that cancelled out the thought it represents. Um, it's talking about cause and effect. You see, in our world which opposes truth, we think the unreal is true. <laughs> the unreal is this. We see the world around us as the cause and ourselves as the effect. All of the problems we have comes from this world around us, it's the cause, and what it does to us is the effect. Well, that's not the truth, the truth is it's the other way round. We are the cause, and this is the effect. It's what we project out is the cause, and what we see around us is the effect. How I see my brother is the cause I projected out, and the effect is how I see him. But it's only a thought, what I project out onto his, uh, the illusion itself about my brother standing before me. It's not what he really is. It's something like that Rushmore Memorial in um, in America, where they got those four presidents. You go there and you look up at them, I suppose. Well, lots of tourists go there and look at it. But really, all they're looking at is just one great big rock, isn't it? The fact that there's four presidents is just an illusion. They're just looking at a rock. Behind that chiseled facade, it's just rock. What you're actually looking at is rock. Any idea of image is solely in your head what's been perceived by others who perceive the image the same as you. But in reality, it's just a lump of rock. And so it is here. Brother that stands before me, it's just an illusion. It goes on to say, and thus a picture has no cause at all. Once I see that I have caused my brother's image, that it has no cause at all, that is just a thought of mine, I can then look beyond that for what he really is. The picture of your brother that you see is wholly absent and never has been. It's never been there. What you put there, or what is there, is what you put there, or what I've put there. Let then the empty space it occupies be recognised as vacant, and the time devoted to its seeing be perceived as idly spent, a time unoccupied. An empty space that is not seen as filled, an unused interval of time not seen as spent and fully occupied, becomes a sign of invitation to the truth to enter and to make itself at home. So what he's saying there is, once I stop seeing my brother as the illusional being I project onto him, then God can step in and show me what he really is, an extension of himself, just as I am. Oneness. It's there for us all to see. We just have to work on it. <laughs> so that's from chapter 27, The Healing of the Dream, part 3, Beyond All Symbols, the third paragraph. Excellent. Thanks very much. See you again.